What's up everyone? Today, we're gonna to be going over a bipartite graph, or lead code 785. Now the input is going to be a graph which may or may not be strongly connected. And the output needs to be true or false to see if we can make this graph bipartite. So what does bipartite mean? It means that we take all the nodes uh, from the graph and they can be split into two separate sets, which the edges will go from one node to the other in separate sets. So for something like this, it looks like this. This is set one, set two. We can put zero and, and uh, two in here. And here we're gonna put one, three, and four. So zero goes from one to three, and two goes from one to three, and two goes from uh, two to four. Now, each set is gonna be color one and color two. Now, because we can s split the nodes into separate parts like this. This can also become a graph coloring problem, which is how I'm going to be doing it with the BFS approach. Uh, so, for example, uh, this would have blue, and this would be blue, and this would be green and green. So every single node has neighbors which are a different color. Now, because the input may or may not be strongly connected, I'm going to make use of a BFS helper method where if we have another component which is like this, which, which is like this, I have to first color this strongly connected component and then check in my uh, map if I still have some uncolored nodes. So I'm gonna be using uh, two global uh, data structures, one for keeping track of the actual adjacency graph, and two, I'm going to be keeping track of what color each node is. Now, I'll be using that same color map to see if a node has been visited or not, which is standard BFS. So, my uh, two helper methods are going, my two data structures are going to be um, map. So, we can just have a, a global one like this. map uh, graph and the map color. So I'm going to make this uh, graph is going to be, uh, actually it's, I'll make this map of an integer and a list of integer. the new hash map. And another map to keep track of the colors. The key is going to be the node itself, and the value is going to be the color. So now that we have that, let me actually build these two graphs and populate it, uh, these two maps and populate it. So the code for that would be like this. If the input is just gonna be the edges, it's a 2D grid of integers. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than edges dot length, and i plus plus. I'm going to have a list of integers called L and I'll say graph that get or default uh, I and new array list and then since this is the edges I'm going to iterate through each single one for int J through uh, edges of i, I'm going to put that in the map, in the list, l.add j, 
And then once that connection is done building, I'm going to say color dot put i. So when I'm on this one, I'm going to say this is a color of negative 1, which is how I'm indicating that we have not visited a node yet, and it still uh, has no specific color. So I'm going to say, for example, uh, 0 is blue. And then 1 is green. So once my maps are constructed, I can write the overall logic. Now, what I'm going to do is go through my color map to see if there are nodes that are still not colored. Uh, so I would say uh, graph dot keyset if color dot get i is equal to negative 1, which means it's not colored, I'm going to see if my BFS utility, and I pass in a color, the, the, the node, I pass in the node, if this is false, then I return false. If all of my uh, iterations with the BFS is, is true, and there's no false at all, I can return the final answer as, as true. Now that's the overall picture, and this is how we go through the, each of the connected components. But now let's look at the meat of the algorithm in BFS. Mm, okay, so Boolean BFS. Use a different marker for this one. Boolean BFS is going to have int u for the origin, and then I can say this. So first, I'm going to um, make this a, a, a q q u e u e of integers, and it's instantiated as a new linked list. And then I'm going to put my u, which is, say, for example, a node, and then I'm going to put it in my color map. So color.put u, and I'll start off with a 0. And then I'm going to add that to the q, q.add u. So first, u is getting colored as a blue. Now, what would my q look like right now? Q is going to have 0, which is colored as blue. So this is going to be my Q. And then let me actually have my color map as well. Everything in the beginning is negative 1. But I changed my color, right? So I'm going to put it as uh, 0. So this is the node, and this is the color. And you can reference the colors here. If it's 0, it's blue. If it's 1, it's green. Actually, I can just say here. That's that one. Now, I can start the logic. While Q is not empty, I'll pop it up. I'll say int current is going to be Q.pull. And then I'm going to say int current color is going to be color.get of cur. So what this means is I popped out my 0 and I want to have its current color. So 0 is out of here and I'm working with blue right now. Then I'm going to go through uh, z zero's neighbors. So I'll say for uh, int i through graph dot get of cur, 
um, this is where we do the core logic, is that if my neighbor has the same color as me, then we return false. What that means is my neighbor has already been colored, and then it's the same color as me, so we cannot make it by part type. So if current color is the same as color dot get i then return false now if it's uh, not the same color as me then what I want to do is I check if uh, color dot get um, i is negative one, which means it hasn't been colored yet. And the current color is not equal to color dot get i. Then I add it in the queue. And I'm going to color it the opposite of what I am. Uh, color dot put, sorry, color dot put i, and then one minus current color. When I say one minus current color, that that's just the easy way of flipping whatever I have. So if I have uh, current is zero, and I want to make that a one, I can say one minus zero, and that'll give me a one. If I have a one and I want to make that a zero, I can say one minus one, and that gives me a, that gives me um, the flip. So this is just a trick I'm using here. So that will put it in there, and then I can finish that and uh, finish the if, and then finish the for, and then I can say return true and finish this BFS method. So let's see. what actually goes on in here. So last I left off, zero was colored blue. So now zero got popped out and we're looking at its neighbors. Now zero's neighbors are not the same color as that. So it's not gonna return false. It's gonna see if the colors are negative one and they are, and the colors is not the same as, as uh, blue. So it's gonna color its neighbors green. And then we're gonna put one and three in here. So one and three are gonna have green colors. Now we have one and three, one gets popped. One is gonna look at its neighbored color. So we can see that it's a different color and then it's not gonna go in here because it's already colored, right? Color.get is not equal to negative one. So it's gonna forget about zero, then it's gonna look at two. Now two is not colored and it's not the same color as one. So two is gonna get added here, and two is gonna get the opposite color. So this is gonna become blue. Now we have three next. Three is gonna get popped out, and three is gonna look at its neighbors and see that they're both colored. So it's not gonna do anything. Now we have two. Two is gonna get popped out, and then it's gonna look at one and three, and it's gonna say they're already colored. but we can see that four is not colored. So it's going to add four in here, and then it's gonna make the color green. Now ultimately four is gonna get popped as well, and then we'll be done with the BFS loop. At the end we can see there haven't been any false returns, so we can say the original question is true. So that's how you solve bipartite graph. Uh, if you liked the video, please like it. And let me know in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe and thanks for watching.